What's up guys? I hope all of you are doing well. I appreciate the feedback that you guys gave back on the street photography video and it really got me thinking what else can we talk about to really give you guys some valuable information. It came to my mind that we have not discussed black and white photography. Black and white photography is the foundation for building your understanding of how to compose your images. It's all about light and contrast which are fundamental to the images themselves. And since we're shooting black and white, I guess it would make sense for this video to be black and white. So let's tone down the saturation. What am I kidding? No, no, there's no way we're gonna be filming in black and white. That's a little too much, but everything I'm gonna be shooting is gonna be black and white. I've changed the settings on my camera, so I'm shooting monochrome, and we're gonna be going out in different locations, trying to find cool spots that we can really give you some positive feedback. I wanna give you some tips that are valuable and really getting you guys to think about what to do when you're out there shooting. So let's waste no time. Hit the road. Guys, black and white photography. My very first point for black and white photography is look for images that provide a high contrast. In some cases, that means putting your subject in front of a shaded backdrop. And in other cases, it's putting it behind a light backdrop, like as in these buildings, which are in front of the white sky behind it. This is what you're able to do when you want to capture contrast. You're getting the juxtaposition of the two different types of exposures, and that really creates that really interesting and high contrast visual that you want. Such subject matters offer a notable contrast between light and dark, and those contrasts will shine through in a stunning black and white photograph. All right guys, so point number two, it's all about texture. Texture is a very fundamental piece in order to allow you to really express contrast. And in this case, the bark of a tree is a perfect example where in which the way the light reflects and bounces off the bark allows you to really play around with black and white images in a way that engages the audience. And then of course, thinking about the focal distance of the subject and the depth of it, that's another way to really illustrate how depth of field Black and white images and contrast can really work together to be complementary. So I'm going to be shooting around the street and show you different methods of how to express this exact motion of contrast in black and white images. thing when you're shooting black and white images is that you need to have your ISO and your aperture as low as possible. Black and white photography should feature sharp consistent focus and minimal digital noise. A small aperture and a low ISO will help achieve those goals. You may have to mix and match your settings once in a while depending on the different lenses that you utilize. This is probably one of the hardest videos I've done and not because it's hard to capture the images but I'm in like so much pain right now. I don't know if you guys can see this but Last night, I did something stupid, as always. <laughs> I decided to fly my drone at uh, my cousin's bachelor party and we had rented a cottage in Muskoka. The drone went up in the air and it wasn't coming back. And it was just hovering over the water and it was about to land and I literally just threw my wallet out and I gave my cousin my controller and I jumped in, grabbing onto like a railing, sliced my hand open. Like we're talking about for those who have a weak sense of gut, don't listen to this, but I could see my bone. That's how freaking deep it was. It was so bad, I was just gushing blood, ran to the hospital, got stitches, and then while I got my stitches, they obviously gave me a whole bunch of meds, but they also gave me my tetanus shot. And right now, I can barely lift my right arm either. So I'm like walking around like, yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful day. The reason I told you guys that story is just, Sometimes you don't have to get your drone if it's in a situation like that because the consequences are quite drastic. You just have to be taking care of yourself. And this is the one time I let my guard down, you know, I didn't really think through it. Uh, thankfully, I still have my hand and my finger. When I walked in the hospital, there was a guy who literally came with like half of his hand missing and I was just like, oh, I feel like my situation is insignificant, but come on, you learn. <laughs> you grow and you learn.
guys. So I want to talk to you guys about my camera setting, what I'm using. Since we're traveling outside, I want to travel light. So I brought a 15 to 35 millimeter and I'm using my R5. The reason why I brought my 15 to 35 is because it's still a 2.8. So that does give me a very low aperture. Uh, also gives me the ability to use it as a zoom lens if I want. But I've been shooting mainly at 15 just because I want to capture the vastness of some of these uh, cityscapes and landscapes. I want to see that contrast that's visible. I also want to be able to get as much information as possible. You can always go in and crop the image if you want. Things that I look out for, I'm looking for reflections, I'm looking for light leaks, and this is why we're underneath the Gardner Expressway right now. I want to see if I can find some cool vantage points and capture some of this light that's coming in before sunset. So let's go. Another really beneficial tool that your cameras will allow you to utilize is this concept of rule of thirds. And rule of thirds are a great way to really be able to steer your audience's, uh, your viewers' eyes to the elements that you want them to focus on. Uh, this is a setting that you can set up on your, your camera itself and it'll pop up the grid. The idea here is to just make sure that you're always portraying your subject or the thing that you want to focus the best way possible so that your viewers are able to actually focus on the area you want them to. The rule of thirds creates a grid of three horizontal lines and three vertical lines visible through your viewfinder or your camera's LCD screen. The points where the lines meet are the points of interest. So place the subject on one of those points off center towards either the left or third or right third of the frame. at the last point of this video, which is a very important point and some of you will do it, some of you might not, but it's very important after you take your image that you look at your camera's histogram. Your histogram will display a lot of information regarding your image that you need to know and to be able to recognize so you can make changes accordingly. A histogram is a digital representation of the tonal value of your shot. The histogram of a well-composed photograph will indicate the majority of the pixels are away from the shot's most extreme blacks and extreme whites. If your shot mostly contains extremes, you will need to adjust your exposure to preserve detail in your final black and white image. I am sweating buckets right now, it is so hot. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'm going to try to do a lot of these kind of photography focused content pieces. So if you do have any suggestions, leave them down below. Check out my presets. I've been updating my website quite a lot and I have a couple of sales that you guys might want to take advantage of. And as always, I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.